Hello, this is Malorian, and this is going to be a pretty awesome fantasy battle report. Uh, as some of you probably should know, I'm in the middle of a fantasy campaign with a bunch of buddies, uh, including Karen Dunleavy. And with this one here, this is now pretty much the end of six turns. Uh, it's an eight turn long campaign. And for this one, the way it ends is with a storm of magic. And so normally storm magic is pretty cool. You usually do it, you know, two players. No, no, no. We're going to do this with six players. So it's going to be pretty crazy. You're going to get uh, 2,000 points uh, in your army. Then uh, 500 points of monsters. Uh, we decided, decided not to do the artifacts. Uh, remember as well, there's going to be a little bit of jank going on because you also have your campaign stuff. So some people are going to get a few extra points. Uh, one of the guys had basically like the scar snake thing so that we had a roll of dice for each of our units. And on a one, things had to start in reserve. Uh, I didn't get anything cool like that. I got a little thing for the map where I got an extra move. But anyway, this is going to be a lot of fun. So this... One army here is the Lisbon player that keeps on kicking my butt. Uh, he is going to be running this super slam up in the fulcrum here. Uh, there's going to be a couple of units of skinks. And he's actually, he, he didn't really all go in one zone. He kind of spaced out, but in this zone anyway. Uh, he also has a big unit of Saurus. There's going to be a couple of the uh, skink priest in there because having extra magic casters is a pretty big deal. Uh, he took a... a, a Dragon, like pretty much the one where he's all sixes. Can't remember the name, but he's a dragon. Uh, he has a saber tusk there, a couple of salamanders, a uh, giant. The next one over, and as well, too, I should explain that it's basically good guys versus bad. So everything on this side of the board is going to be on the same team, and uh, the other stuff's going to be on my team. But we'll go over that when we see the, the overview picture. But this is going to be the high elves, and so what they're going to take is actually like the grand dragon or whatever you call it. You know, basically all its stats are seven. You're going to see here that the Lisbon player snuck over a nether, a couple of salamanders. He's going to have a character up there in the tower, a couple of unit of reavers. You can see that a couple of uh, scar vets are joined up in there as well. Some archers in the back, white lines in the front, uh, a little bust there, uh, the silver helms, and then some phoenix guard with the rest of the characters. Uh, the last Lisbon player will be here. He has Teco Echo, who will be starting inside the zone here. Uh, some more skinks, and the blue skinks here are actually from the other side again, too. So that Lisbon player is really kind of spreading out. Uh, there's a unit of the uh, Cold One Riders. Uh, there is going to be some Saurus here with the BSB. Then there's also going to be a Temple Guard unit with a Slan, a Scrox unit. And then uh, the, the old Dragon Ogre model there is going to be a Zote. All right, on the other side here, this is going to be my Chaos ally. He's going to have a Mounted Wizard up there in his Falcrum. Uh, he's going to be having a Gorgon. He's going to have a couple of Chimeras. He's going to have a guy in a disc. He's going to have some Knights. He's going to have, actually, those guys are going to be Forsaken, so that's going to be kind of crazy. Uh, the, the, okay, here's the thing, is that everyone on our side took Fimmers. Now, Fimmers are kind of cool. If you look into a fluff, they're kind of dark, but they actually have a model that came in the Hero Quest box. The problem is that they kind of said that, and I don't know where this comes from, that they're supposed to be on a 40 mil base. Well, that's not really the size of the one that comes from Hero Quest. So I said, screw it. I painted my one specifically for this, so I'm running with that. But these guys will be using different models. So that Croc Store there is actually going to be a Fimmer. Uh, he has then also uh, a couple of the spawns. Those will be those weird blue beasts. And you can see there's an eagle here. Uh, then over here, this is going to be my Skaven buddy. This is going to be Karen Dunleavy. And he's going to have a Gracier. Uh, a whole bunch of engineers here. He's on the bell. There's going to be a couple of the, um, the Warp Lightning uh, uh, Cannons. Sorry. There's going to be a Rat Dart. Uh, he's going to be having his Fimmer starting in his little uh, fulcrum there. He's going to have some uh, rat ogres. And then one of his biggest units, unfortunately, uh, started in reserve. So that's kind of too bad. Otherwise, here's me. Here's what uh, I want to talk about. Uh, you can also see finishing off the Skaven. He also took a regular dragon and also a Doom Wheel. Now, for me, I'm going to be running my Whelpsley one. So this is the one where it's all basically done around goblins. And uh, I'm trying for some jank here. So 
In the very beginning, I'm going to be starting with a level 1 inside the tower because the problem is that you don't really want to be in a tower with anything good because with all the things being thrown around, they pretty much die pretty quick. So I'm starting with something crappy, and then I got Welpsley and the Fimmer that can follow up. On the left side, I have 100 Night Goblins with bows, and in there I have a Goblin BSB with a Poison Banner. So this is the first time I'm trying this Poison Banner with all this cool stuff, and I'm really looking forward to it. Otherwise, on the other side, I'm going to have 100 Night Goblins with spears, 8 bosses in there with great weapons. I'm going to have 2 Eagles, which are going to be done with those old Cockatrice models. I'm going to have a Giant, and then I'm also going to have the my full allotment of War Machines. So 2 Rock Lavas, 2 Doom Divers. One of them is going to be off the board, along with my Bunker of regular Goblins. Uh, and then also the 4 Chekas. So here's over the whole board, and now I can actually tell you how this thing works. So really what you're trying to do in Storm of Magic is you're trying to capture these fulcrums. It's six turns. Uh, at the end, it's almost like Watchtower. Whoever controls the most fulcrums wins. If there's a draw in that, then there'll be whoever's the most victory points. But while you're in these fulcrums, there's all these crazy spells you can do every turn. And also, it really depends. If you just at least have a fulcrum, you can do one super spell. If you have the same number of fulcrums as your opponent, then you have access to another, and then if you have more fulcrums, you have access to even another one. Now, I gotta say, for the most part, I don't really plan on doing any real spells. I can leave that to my allies. My whole goal, and what I want to do in this game, is hold my fulcrum and really use my war machines to clear away the the monsters so that my allies can do very well. Uh, really, we're, we're really planning on the Warriors of Chaos player to be able to blitz the lizards on the top and take that fulcrum. Uh, I'm going to be trying to use my Doom Divers to shoot down. Uh, the slant's pretty damn tough. Uh, something I should explain is that while you're in a fulcrum, you have a 3 plus ward, plus you can't have multiple wounds done to you, so it's kind of hard to kill them. But one thing that gets past that is Doom Divers, because I'll do D6 hits, it'll go past the armors, and sure you're going to have your ward save, but... For the most part, I'm just going to sneak through two or three wounds, and I'm just going to kill your character. And all of a sudden, if I do that near the end of the game, you just lose a Fulcrum. So we'll see how it goes. So uh, this is going to be kind of showing the, ma the matchups here. So for the most part, over here is going to be me versus this Lizardman player. Uh, normally, this is kind of bad because he, he beats me quite often. But the one thing that's going to help me is that he isn't all even here. So he's going to be having his... Two of his salamanders not even here. Some of his skinks aren't here. My poison guy should be able to shoot him off right away. I should be able to kill off his monsters. And then I should be able to actually bully him around. So whereas I thought I was going to be defensive, uh, also now I'm thinking I can be pretty offensive. There's this matchup up here, which is kind of uh, odd. Uh, the Hive player did get some extra points. I'm going to be using my Eagles to try and help him out. Uh, hopefully Dreaded 13th can do a lot of work, but I'm not really sure how this one will go. And over here, Warriors of Chaos could really do a lot of damage. He has two Chimeras, he has three monsters, and Saurus hate fighting monsters, because they're usually wound on sixes, and Thunder Stomps and all that stuff just crush them. So I'm really feeling good about this flank. Uh, and of course, this is all about Welpsley, you know, he's all part of the campaign, and uh, overall, I just don't want him to die, because then he might be captured or something like that. Alright, so first thing we're going to be showing is uh, we actually got first turn, which is pretty cool, and uh, however, he still gets the Vanguard. And uh, most of Teco Echo, and he's going to be vanguarding up these salamanders, which is not something I planned on. But because we won first turn, this will actually let me shoot them first turn. And the big thing that I was <laughs> trying to show here is that when we were trying to roll for who gets first turn, I was rocking it. Basically, each of us rolled one dice and did a, a sum, and we actually tied the first two times. But like every single time, I was doing a six. So uh, I'm doing my part. Okay, uh, now we're into the actual battle report, nine minutes in. Uh, sorry about that, guys, but this one has a lot I have to explain. But we're going to start with some animosity. Uh, my block here is going to be failing. They have to charge to do nothing, and there's nothing to charge. And I don't really care, because uh, I didn't need these guys to move yet anyway. Otherwise, what's really happening here is that we try some charges, and they don't work. The Rat Ogres go for the Chameleons. They fail their, their charge there. Uh, the Dragon tried to get into Salamanders, and he failed there. 
And uh, otherwise, the big thing he's going to do is he goes for a Skitter Leap first turn to get this guy over here. Because if we can crank this unit with a Doom Rocket, uh, yeah, they're they're pretty much useless. Uh, otherwise, I do some shooting over here, but man, it, it just did not go well. I thought with all of my War Machines, I'd be able to shoot down the Dragon, uh, but it just did not happen. I just kept on scattering off, or I'd roll a 1 to wound, and in the end, I only did 2 wounds. Uh, otherwise, in my shots to the Salamanders, again, with all those poison shots, I thought I'd have this guy, but uh, no, I mean, uh, with with him having still a 5 plus armor, and also a 5 plus handler save, which I, I really hate that rule, uh, he stays alive with one wound, so still one annoying salamander. But I've, I've kind of set up the, because here's my problem, if that salamander gets to the river, between me having to shooting long range, uh, or moved, either or, and plus he's a skirmisher, and plus he's in the river, I'm hitting on seven, so no poison. So I positioned the one eagle there so that he could charge whatever goes in the river. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I guess this is kind of a better picture of it, but a Doom, doom Wheel's coming over here to help me out. Uh, my Wizard Hat is giving me the uh, life magic, so I put uh, Flesh to Stone onto it to make it a little bit tougher. Over here in the middle, not too much else happens. Uh, just some positioning and, uh, again, not having much lock, luck with the Warp Lightning Cannon, especially since one couldn't shoot because that had come on this turn. And on this first turn here, he's really just coming on up. Uh, one of his chimeras started off the board. Again, that really kind of affected us. But uh, again, he, he's getting up there and he's looking pretty tough. All right, so one of the things that's going to be happening over here is that whenever you miscast inside of a fulcrum, you have to do two things. One, you have to do your regular miscast. And then, if you survive, you have to do a fancy fulcrum miscast. And what happened here to the Chaos player is that his character got turned into a monster. So, he's actually, his horse dies, and he's going to be using this femur monster to, to represent him. But, uh, yeah, he's basically like this crazed man that's not going to be casting spells. So, uh, that didn't really help, because it really meant we just kind of lost the fulcrum. Otherwise, on their turn now, they're going to be charging in with their dragon and their ogre. And uh, hold or not, we're in a good, pretty good spot to, to counter charge after. Uh, otherwise, over here, uh, the Zote has a cool power where he can actually move a forest. So we put this forest in the middle of these guys here. You know, it's going to take away their Steadfast, and as well, it's a blood forest. So if you ever cast magic on them, it's going to hurt them more as well. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, just trying to show here where what happened is that after some magic that he did uh, from his fulcrum, uh, we let it just happen, and then we turned Teku Echo into a, to a toad with a frog scroll. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, we should be able to kill him pretty easily now. <coughs> otherwise, back here, we have uh, a little bit of trouble because he casts a comet right here. So uh, that's going to cause lots and lots of damage. But really, uh, with all my units here, I should be able to survive. I'm going to lose some War Machines. But if my War Machines can kill off a monster before they die, I'll be happy. So otherwise, uh, over here on this side, he's able to cast a Fireball. And that's able to kill the level 1 I had in my Fulcrum. And this was BS. <laughs> he comes up with a Salamander. I know I'm going to lose some guys. I lose nine from his, his breath that goes on me. And then you have to take a panic test. And, you know, I don't have super leadership, but I have leadership eight re-rolled. Yeah, I fail and I go off the board. Uh, I also panic my one war machine in doing so. And, uh, yeah, just total, total BS. <laughs> Uh, I'm still okay, though. You know, this isn't too much that I've lost. I can still hit him with the eagle. I got the big unit. But, wow, losing all these guys this early really sucks. So, otherwise, this is what this side's going to look like. Uh, the Doom Wheel actually holds. Uh, getting that plus two toughness on there really helped. On the center flank here, it's looking pretty damn dangerous. You know, Salamander's there being scary. He has the two Scarvets coming in. There's this whole dragon fight going on. So I am really pretty worried about the center. And otherwise, here on the right side, he makes a charge with his cold ones. I believe they fail the charge. And uh, now I'm hoping they can get in there and do a lot of damage. 
So on my turn, I charge in the chicken, but uh, here's the real problem. This was just barely in because we had another miscast on a fulcrum. That was part of that whole fireball that killed my guy on my fulcrum. And what that did was basically this little fog of war so that now the, the maximum line of sight and target ability for anything is 46 and we have to re-roll every magic phase and if there's a double it stops so everything can only see like 14 inches so where was on the right side all those flying things were ready to charge in and do all this stuff uh, a lot of those were more than 14 inches so that really screwed us over but luckily this was still in Otherwise here, uh, I'm going to be sending in my Night Goblins to go after this dragon. Uh, he's already taken a couple of wounds. Uh, hopefully the Doom Wheel can do some more. If not, my Great Weapon should be able to kill it. And if not, I should be able to kill it further on. Over here, he charges his Forsaken into these Temple Guard. And I'm looking forward to see these guys die. And otherwise, in the center, again, a failed charge with those uh, crazy rat ogres. Uh, the dragon goes in and catches the salamanders and kills them. So our dragon's kind of showing its flank to white lions, but eh, at least we're kind of breaking up their line. Uh, also a lot of anti-magic hexes going on his dragon. Uh, over here, uh, because I get up close enough, something I got to kind of show is that first of all, I sent through the fanatics through the Doom Wheel, uh, because of how it was tougher, and then through the Giant. So I did no wounds to the Doom Wheel, did a couple of wounds to the Giant. Then we started doing zaps. He wanted to kill the Giant, so he zapped it. And unfortunately, we did nothing to the Dragon. But we should still be okay here. Unless, of course, he wins by one. I failed my Steadfast test and run off the board, panicking some War Machines as well. And oh my god, this was ridiculous, because, okay, the Comet hasn't come down yet, that thing is just building up and building up, uh, it's a stronger version, but uh, yeah, I am down 200 models, plus, uh, <laughs> my Eagle failed to kill the one wound on the Salamander, even though it was always strike first, and uh, yeah, this is just falling apart. So really, all I'm hoping to do now is shoot down that dragon, hold my fulcrum, and I'll be happy. So a little bit better picture of what's going on over here. And at least for what I was saying, he's been pretty defensive with his other units. So he's not really threatening my fulcrum. So maybe I can pull this off. Otherwise, here in the center, I already kind of showed some of this stuff, but... Uh, I send over the eagle to redirect his characters, and otherwise, yeah, things are getting kind of dirty in here. Over on this side, this was pretty disappointing. Uh, he flies over some guys so that he deal with the, the fulcrum later, but his dice failed him. Uh, those uh, Forsaken have to roll uh, a, a dice to see how many they have for attacks. He rolls a 1, which is pretty crappy. And uh, he also rolls really poorly. So whereas I thought those Temple Guard were going to get ripped apart, no, no, nothing happened. So uh, hopefully this comes together now. All right, so now we're on to his turn. He's going to be charging the Doom Wheel off the board. And uh, then he's going to try and redirect but fail. Over here, he's going to be trying to charge in with the dragon. That's going to fail. But he is going to go into the flank of the White Lions. That's pretty damn scary. Uh, otherwise, okay, I, this is, I think, I made my biggest mistake here. He charges my eagle, and I decide to flee, because once the white lions were in the flank, I figured they had nowhere to go. And then they redirected to my Skaven ally, and this is where I realized I would have been in a much better spot just holding and let them overrun into the white lions or something like that. Uh, let them really get their shots on the mafter. But, uh, yeah, I think I was just on tilt from losing 200 models uh, over the first couple of turns. And uh, I, I was really kind of feeling bad after I saw this happen. Uh, sorry, I didn't mention it, that uh, he also had a flank charge of his silver helms into the flank of the Forsaken. So that's bad. But even worse, uh, just in case... Everyone was worried that I had too many models. Uh, the, the comet comes down. It kills basically everything. Uh, my bunker is really crippled. I now have no rock lobas, no doom divers. Kills uh, two of my uh, spear chuckas as well. And it is just so bad for the goblins. So otherwise, here in the center, uh, I'm sure I'm trying to show... I think this is the magic. I think he does the fireball 
uh, trying to kill off the guy in our Falcrum here. So it turns out that Fire Magic and the Super Spell you get, where you get six dice, uh, 66 Strength 4 hits, is pretty damn awesome. Because sure, you have a 3 plus ward, but you can only save so many of those. Uh, that's going to be coming from this guy here, and then his Fulcrum Crazy Miscast is going to be making it so actually it moves his Fulcrum. So it moves it over to the side, doesn't really change things too much, but again, you never know what crazy stuff's going to happen in this game. So otherwise, in this game over here, he's able to kill my Always Strike First <laughs> Eagle again, because, uh, yeah, I just can't do anything. Uh, his Saber Tusk is coming over to cause trouble. I forgot, I do actually have one Doom Diver left, so that's kind of nice. Uh, it was kind of funny, he moved over some Reavers to try and kill my two Fanatics. Um, he lands on the first one, and I figure that the 2d6 will kill them all. Well, I roll like two hits and uh, only killed two of them. So I was like, oh, great. Now he gets to move on to the second one. But they actually fail their panic test and run away. So, eh, it kind of worked. Otherwise, in the center, you can kind of see there how the rats are getting eaten up. Uh, the dragon is dead. And uh, the Forsaken were able to hold. But again, I really thought they'd actually at least kill off some of these uh, Temple Guard. But again, really bad dice. Only rolling ones. And uh, the bad thing, too, is that those rat ogres would love to charge in, but there's a spawn in the way. So over here on the right side, things aren't going really all that great. Uh, again, rolling pretty bad for the number of attacks on the Temple Guard, so not really killing them as quickly as we'd hoped. Um, we are able to hold, though, because we're steadfast, so that's pretty good. Otherwise, on the right side, he goes and he beats up a Chimera, and so one monster down, and as well, we'd already lost the Gorgon from Poison Shots. There's another monster down. So really, everything's here is going pretty bad, uh, except for hopefully we'll get that one, uh, get this Fulcrum. So going on to our turn here, um, we are not able to charge in the Rat Ogres because the stupid spawn again. But the one thing we do have lined up is that he charges the Chimera into the flank of the Saurus, and the Knights into the flank, are already here in the flank, of the, the Knights. And if he does this right, this is going to be huge. We can kill off almost all the Lizardman army, and uh, as bad as things are going for me on the left, we can totally turn it over here on the right. Plus, now we have their Fulcrum, so now we're ahead 4-2. to two. Uh, And this one I really had to take a picture of, because, you know, at this point here... <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm being a bad sport, but I'm getting kind of bored because I literally have nothing. Everybody else has all these kind of epic battles going on, and I barely have any models at all. I think I have like a total of like 10 models. And so over comes Kieran's dog with his sad, sad face. It's like, bro, where are your goblins at? And I'm like, dude, I know. Sad, eh? So just had to share. Uh, otherwise, what's going here on the left is I actually have a hope that maybe I can take his Fulcrum. Now, let me explain what my dastardly plan is. Uh, first of all, the big thing that had to happen is that that dragon had to be dead. So I shot down the dragon. He's gone. Uh, reformed the face to Saber Tusk. Tried to kill the Saber Tusk, but that didn't work either. But I got Flesh of Stone up onto my bunker, so they're pretty damn solid. Uh, currently, my Fimmer is in the Fulcrum. But my plan to take his stuff is, again, he doesn't have a lot of stuff here. And so if I can sneak past and get my Giant to his slam, I can stuff him in my pants. I can do all this fancy stuff. Uh, because it actually turns out that whereas I thought I could just go up and poison the guy to death, uh, with my big unit. No, this guy's ethereal, but you can still put ethereal things in your pants. Otherwise, over here, uh, we're able to kill off all the Reavers, but those characters are just so killy, and they're destroying everything. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this center is still looking pretty bad. And otherwise, over here, uh, remember how this is going to be super awesome? Yeah, it's not going super awesome. Uh, we roll pretty bad for against the Temple Guard, so they're still standing. And unfortunately, we do the fight in the wrong order, so that we do the Chimera first. It gets beaten up and ran off the table, and then we do the Knights, and they beat up the Cav. But whereas they could have gone into the Thesaurus and really turned that fight for us, they go into these skinks. So, a little bit of a mistake, and now we're done another monster. 
So on his turn, he says, screw that. We're not going to go for some flesh to stone goblins. We're going to kill this Doom Diver, which is the right call. Otherwise, over here, uh, yeah, the... So we have this spawn that's fighting here, and now he's just really putting the fights in his side by putting in these temple guards. So if we had any hope of winning because we have Steadfast, yeah, it's not going to happen anymore. His dragon's going to be going into the engineer in the fulcrum, so that's going to be bad. And over here, the white lions are going to be charging this unit, and... Whereas I kind of hoped there were slaves and we could then do bad, mean stuff, turns out they're clan rats, so this is just going to be us getting our butts kicked for a while. So otherwise, on this side here, again, that damn fireball, they are getting us every single time, and uh, the super fireball kills my Fimmer. Over here, 20 poison shots kills my giant. I was a little bit salty about that. That should not have happened, but dice... And over here, maybe this makes up for it because he charges me. He does a wound. I then do a wound back, I think. Or either way, I hold. That was the big thing. I hold. So that's kind of crazy. So otherwise, my side is looking like this. Center is looking like this. And the right side is looking like this. So somehow uh, this fight didn't actually go too bad. The uh, Forsaken broke and they're gone. But we were able to kill the BSB. Turns out that, you know, having some unbreakable spawn might be not a bad thing. Over here? Yeah. How about this? We say, Dragon, get out of here. Because one of the things you can do is everybody knows these spells. And one of them is you have a chance to disbind these extra monsters. And it's random. I mean, first you have to get the spell off, and then you could be doing all these crazy stuff. But we get the five, which is the monster goes away. So this super dragon, just gone. And that's a huge load off our mind. Uh, by the way, I should have actually said that the dragon combat here, uh, <laughs> we survived. We made enough three plus wards to live. So that was pretty cool. Uh, otherwise here on this side, yeah, uh, everything's kind of falling apart. Uh, well, okay, here, first of all, his, his Scar Vets break the unit and they get away. But I decide, damn it, I'm going to start doing things. So Welpsley is now in the tower, and I go for the super big life spell. And I need a 30 to cast it, and you can see my dice there. So luckily with six dice, I was able to pull it off with a level two. But what it allows me to do is bring a unit back from the dead. And I thought I could bring back my 100 Night Goblins, but with me about to lose my general, probably, they're just going to panic. So I'm going to bring back this Doom Wheel, which can actually kill off these characters and then probably help us with the White Lions, too. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> what it decides to do is that it misfires and charges into this unit, but that should still work out. Otherwise, over here... Uh, yeah, he beats up my Doom Diver, and uh, he's just kind of moving in on to me. In the center, I was unable to shoot down the other Scar Vet, but in combat we killed the one. The White Lions kill off the unit, and they're facing down the Grey Seer. And uh, yeah, he kills off one of the spawn, but uh, he's still trying to shoot down and kill uh, the guys inside the building there. But of course, having that cool Chaos Guy to disc, he's not breaking, and uh, things aren't going too bad, really. So he charges my bunker. Uh, he does trip over the wall and take a wound. So I'm kind of hopeful that maybe I can sneak one more through. Otherwise, over here, he goes into the bell and charges into the warp lightning cannon. Uh, over here, he's able to beat these guys and reform. Uh, he also charges up into that uh, fulcrum at the top, which will be important. Because what happens is that somebody gets a, an irresistible... And what happens with the Fulcrum miscast is that you just randomize where all the casters are that are in Fulcrums. So where I was, you know, pretty safe on my side and I might be able to survive, uh, now I'm being attacked here. Now, he can only send one model against me, but he does have his Scarvet BSB. So hopefully my wizard hack guy doesn't die. Uh, meanwhile, over here, yeah, this is where I used to be, and uh, yeah, this little stupid skink priest is going to try and come over here and steal my, my tower. 
And yeah, this is pretty pretty bad. Uh, he rolls not too hot. He gets two wounds on me. And I'm like, I got this. I got two ward saves. Three plus, it'll be no problem. I fail them both. All right, all right. I'm a lord. I, I survive. But, you know, I'm still steadfast. I'm still steadfast on an eight. Oh, no. I get kicked out. So it's just, oh, can't believe my dice this game. So otherwise, here on the left, this is what it looks like. Uh, you know, looking at this here really kind of hits home and humbles me because when I walked into this, I was telling my, my partners, you know what, guys? Don't even worry about this corner. I got this locked down. There is no way anyone is going to get my fulcrum. I got this locked down. And I was freaking tabled. So, <laughs> yeah, humbling to the, to the max pretty much. All right, here in the center, uh, things are going kind of bad because he is able to kill the Gracier in the combat, so that's bad. Uh, as well, that Scarvet is kind of loose. And over here, we are finally all fighting up there with the Rat Ogres, but uh, Silver Helms are going to do lots of damage to them. Uh, the good news, though, is that we have the Doom Wheel that comes into the rear of the White Lions, so hopefully that will save us there. Uh, over here on the left, I do my best to try and shoot down this, this stupid little Scarvet, or, or sorry, Skink Chief, and uh, Priest, jeez. I, I hit him, I wound him, but he does his lookout, sir, and makes it. So I could have saved the day, but I fail. Uh, meanwhile, over here, uh, he now has a slan over here, so we charge into that. Uh, but, of course, he's invincible. And then, uh, really, in the combat, we crush those white lions. So, apart from the fact that we don't have a fulcrum, uh, it's going great here. And, uh, yeah, he also beats the rat ogres. They get away. Uh, my whelpsley at the top rallies, but that means he can't go back in. Uh, he's going to charge in here and take off the last of my models, because why not? And, uh, yeah, he gets into the tower. So, all of a sudden now, once he gets into the tower, we realize we're in a really, really bad spot. Especially because over here, where Welpsley should be holding this one, I fail and had to go out and rally. And, uh, yeah, now he's just going to take it with a slant. So, over here, uh, we did have one more Thimmer that was holding that tower. And again, again, it's that fireball spell. I tell you guys, it's a it's a money winner. Uh, it kills off that guy, so we lose another Fulcrum. And he also shoots down Welpsley. So, sad face. So, at the end of turn 5, we now only have one Fulcrum. Uh, the one with the, the disc character. And they have four. And really looking at that, we said, you know what? We just can't get this one. So, we throw in the towel... But, uh, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, the, the big thing I want to kind of push here is that Storm Magic, it, it is kind of wonky. There's some crazy stuff going on. But if you can get a group of guys together, they're trying to be, you know, semi-competitive, but really pushing for the fun more than anything else. Storm Magic is great. Uh, there definitely are some ways to really play it to get the most out of it. Uh, you want to have a lot of backup mages, so you can be putting your cheaper guys into the fulcrums so that you're not really risking too much. Or if you have access to a slan, that was a really great idea. Uh, what one of them did is they took a lore master, so they had you know that's the lore master for the high elves, so that they, they know every single lore, the signature, and that really gave them access to every single super spell in the game. So that was kind of crazy. Uh, again, that super fireball being an absolute winner, but uh, yeah, the the goblins really letting everyone down. You know, when I set up, everyone's like, "Wow, look at all those goblins! They're so awesome." And I was like, yeah, guys, don't worry, I got this. And it just all fell apart. So, you know, it almost felt a little bit like 7th back when you didn't get the BSB reroll. You know, this stuff happened a lot because back then the BSB reroll was only for if you lose a combat. Uh, and so you could have that where all your army just bad one bad roll and you're off the board. But now in 8th with the, the reroll for Panic, oh, yeah, I mean, you should be safe. But... Uh, you know, it turns out leadership eight, a little bit of a risk, and uh, it definitely cost me here. So either way, I uh, hope you guys like watching. Uh, <laughs> an inter interesting final note, uh, you know how I was trying to really make sure Welpsley didn't die? Uh, well, it turned out 
my effect for Welpsley dying was that he actually got better. He actually got plus one movement. So now I got this uh, movement five goblin. So uh, kind of cool. But either way, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later. Bye.